Welcome to the American College of Hyperbaric Medicine. Today's lecture topic is vacuum-assisted closure combined with hyperbaric oxygen therapy, exploring the synergy. This lecture is presented by Dr. Jeffrey A. Nisgoda, Dr. Jack Simononik, and Mr. Greg Raleigh, all staff members at the Center for Comprehensive Wound Care and Hyperbaric Oxygen Therapy at the St. Luke's Medical Center facility in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Today we're going to be talking about vacuum-assisted closure therapy and the synergy that can be achieved when you use this technology with hyperbaric oxygen therapy. Joining me today is my colleague at St. Luke's Medical Center in Milwaukee, Dr. Jack Simononik. Jack, welcome to WebCME. Good to be here. There's a lot of activities here in Wisconsin that we enjoy uh, for, you know, 10 months out of the year. This is one of them. Uh, I actually caught Jack on video, uh, and I wanted to share that with you. Jack, I think you had a pretty good day. You caught some fish, didn't you? Felt a couple of tugs there. Yeah, here's the, one now. I think you got, yeah, got, oh, uh, Jack. That, that had to hurt. <laughs> that had to hurt. <laughs> so, yeah, I hope you enjoy your day. Okay, let's talk about compromised wound healing before we start talking about vac and hyperbaric. As uh, all of us in the audience know, we're uh, oftentimes uh, dealing with patients that have compromised wound healing. These are the patients that we see on a, a routine, continuing basis. These are our compromised patients turning into chronic uh, wounds. Uh, and there are many reasons that these wounds become chronic in nature, and it's due to multiple compromising factors. Uh, let's look at those very briefly. Uh, first and, and foremost is compromised uh, blood flow. When patients have poor perfusion, uh, poor uh, oxygenation of the tissues, uh, these processes do not go along in an orderly fashion and they turn into chronic wounds. There's in addition many other factors that need to be addressed by a comprehensive wound healing program uh, to prevent stagnation in the wound healing cascade. We know that healing is based on physiology and normal wounds go through these phases pretty much without delay. And we're not going to belabor these phases. Suffice it to say there are many cell lines, many factors, uh, and many things happening as we heal these wounds. And we know that in most of us uh, sitting in this uh, audience, uh, we're non-compromised hosts. We don't have chronic medical problems, reasonable uh, distal blood flow, and we progress through those phases of healing without much delay. However, our patients that uh, become uh, those with chronic wounds will stagnate, and they often will stagnate between the inflammatory and the proliferative phases of wound healing. And these chronic wounds can present uh, and return to our clinic for weeks and years at a time. We'll show you some cases uh, later in the presentation of these patients that have had wounds for many, many years. Well, our approach in a comprehensive wound healing clinic is to address the multiple factors with advanced modalities that prevent these wounds from becoming chronic, to address those factors that can predispose these patients to wound chronicity. Now, chronic wounds, as we mentioned, will stagnate between the inflammatory and the proliferative phases. And the question that I have for you, is there possibly a common denominator of all those factors we listed earlier, a common denominator uh, that can uh, cross all of those factors and be, if you will, a common reason uh, regardless of what the compromising factor is? And Jack, do you have any thoughts on that? What is one that we address frequently here? on our center? Well, considering we do hyperbaric oxygen therapy, we usually think about oxygen and hypoxia as the, one, hypoxia. Of the, one of the primary reasons wounds don't heal. We're going to build a case for you that oxygen deficit certainly plays a role uh, and is a common denominator in all those factors that compromise uh, wound healing. Let's take a little closer look at that. I think when we have a wound, whether it's a post-surgical wound or any other chronic wound, we need to ask ourselves two questions. The first question is, what is the etiology of oxygen deficit and, and compromised wounds? And then, Jack, secondarily, you would then ask, obviously, why oxygen is important. Of uh, course. And how it plays a role in acute and chronic wounds. Oxygen deficit can be uh, caused by a number of factors. Uh, let's look at a few of those. You can have an acute vascular insult as seen in surgical patients, tra traumatic patients, uh, those patients with pressure ulcers. Uh, those that are uh, ischemic from an embolic standpoint. You can actually have extrinsic vessel compression uh, when you have too much edema pushing on those vessels extrinsically. And then uh, compromise from chronic disease, whether it's arteriosclerosis or atherosclerosis. Jack, when we have a patient with an arterial compromise, there's a certain uh, pathophysiology, if you will. Wouldn't you lead us through that? Sure, Jeff. Um, usually we're thinking in terms of atherosclerosis, so we have some occlusion of the arterial blood supply that generally results in some uh, level of tissue ischemia, 
uh, resulting in hypoxia, uh, buildup of, of metabolic byproducts, carbon dioxide, of course, uh, microcirculatory changes, and these are coming more uh, to the forefront as more research is being done. Uh, the vascular membrane is affected, and uh, we get edema through extravasation of intravascular fluids. Now, you know, if we reach the point of delayed tissue edema, that goes right back to that slide I showed you earlier, we start to have an extrinsic compression on those blood vessels. So the blood supply is limited, we develop tissue edema, and we it's, further it's, limit that, uh, that blood flow. It's a vicious cycle. Absolutely. And, you know, unless we intervene somewhere along this algorithm, we're going to end up with limb loss or loss of life, even worse.